five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Elk Lodge podcast. It's great to see you. You Woo, look great today. Sure is. Uh, we're in the middle of fall, and nothing fits fall like a good cup of Hexa coffee. Uh, we've been drinking it all day, and we're buzzing. And we wouldn't have it any other way. Hexa coffee is so delicious, and with a little spookiness. Mm. Perfect for this season, but perfect for the whole year and world time uh and if you go to hexacoffee.com that's h-e-x-e <clears throat> coffee.com and check out using the promo code elk you're going to get 10 percent off your total purchase no matter how much that purchase is if you spend a million dollars they're going to give you a hundred thousand dollars off so you could get up to i mean up to infinity off potentially it's a good deal can't beat that uh and today on the show we have another guy that's tough to beat i've tried He's quick. Now it's, <laughs> we have JC Aviles. Uh, the other half of That Kid Is You, our best friend, our sweet boy. Uh, he's been on the show a lot as like, you know, part of like the sort of party podcast we do where it's a large group, but it's been a while since we had just him in the hot seat. And, you yeah, know. What were some of the highlights for you? Of this conversation? Yes. I forget. I forget what we even talked about. But I remember while way. editing it, I was like, wow. We did good. It's like a good flowing conversation. You can tell we're actually friends. Hmm. Uh, we That's do talk great. about a, a show that we are working on, a new project, a sort of, we sort of, you know, spill the beans, pull back the curtain, let you guys in on uh, what's what we got cooking. And um, that's kind of exciting. Well, you heard it here f first, folks. We're spilling all the beans. <laughs> we're spilling the beans drinking and we are beans. drinking the beans. We are beans. <laughs> So please enjoy the show. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Ba -boo! Good move. Ugh. I miss Lau. <laughs> Can't believe you guys are in Portugal. Yeah. Everyone's in Portugal right now. Man, that was so beautiful. Who's in Portugal? Fucking everyone I know, well, like everyone that like travels a lot from Sayu, that people who are like kind of half there and half not, you know? Mm -hmm. They're all in Portugal? And yeah, everyone, like in the past two months, I've seen like seven different people all just like in Portugal. I'm just like, what the fuck? I was not prepared for how beautiful it was. I want to go so bad. Well, I want to go to the Azores, which mm -hmm. is like the islands off the coast of Portugal. Yeah, that sounds nice. Was, That's where they have like those uh, cinnamon rolls. Um... <laughs> Right about here, right? Put it right there. Um, yeah, those like cave formations on the beach where you can like walk into them and then you're they're open still. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. There's, I think they're on those islands, but yeah, it's kind of I don't know if it's like water erosion or just wind erosion that's done it, but there's like kind of open air rock formations over the beaches. Cool. Like art, you know, not quite like arch, just simple arch, arches, but where were you guys in thing. Portugal? We flew into Lisbon and then we caught a train almost like immediately. Had lunch and caught a train to go to Porto, mm. which is further north and like in the valley and cool. wine country, and that was really cool. It's along the river and all the building happens like on the shore of the river, and it's super beautiful. Yeah, man, it was so cool. And then, you know, a few days, when we got up there, we had this amazing hotel. They put us in the top floor of a literal, like, fancy old historical estate. Nice. And we had 360 degree <clears throat> views of the city from up there. Yeah, we were basically the top of in like a tower. A tower. They were like, oh, you're in the tower. It was so cool. Really cool. And that place yeah. was like so fancy and old. It was... um. God, what did he say? I think an old textile textile. A famous a man a rich, who made his riches on textiles. He built it just to like flex. Yeah. He built it for when he was in town, he would just host meetings there, like come to my place for a meeting. And to entice people to come from like Italy, you know, get people out of Venice or what was the yeah, Rome, I guess was the fashion capital of Italy, wherever it was, like getting people to come mm -hmm. see him. He would entice them with this and like I think, estate. I think there was some story that he like wouldn't let someone leave at one point without like signing like a deal like he like kidnapped somebody <laughs> wasn't it something like that i vaguely remember that i more so remember the fact that it fell to the like property of the state because when he died his i, I don't know if he just didn't make it clear in his will what was going to happen to it or or what but his 
current wife like and the stepmother essentially fought over the estate with the daughter and mm. neither it was like a stalemate they both just lost Interesting. and yeah the property was taken over by the state and i guess not open for anything for a long time and then turned into a historic hotel cool it was, it so was neat. cool portugal is really cool like uh <clears throat> any ghosts no ghosts i don't think so it wasn't ghosty but, uh, that place, was a, it was a little dusty and ghosty, that town. It in a fun certainly way. feels ghosty. It's like kind of foggy, mm-hmm. kind of like Fog pi- rolls in. Is it clo- Was it close to the ocean or was it? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like on a I inlet. mean, I th- yeah, it was mm-hmm. exactly. It wasn't, we were on like a river, so we weren't totally on the shore. Yeah. When I think of Portugal at night, I think of werewolves mm-hmm. for some reason. Is there like Porto, common you could lore see with that? No, <laughs> no <it's> just, <laughs> just your own association with yeah, uh, Portugal as werewolves. Well, because you said Halloween earlier, like anything scary around here. So now my brain's in Halloween mode, and I'm just like, oh yeah, where would werewolves be? Probably Portugal mm, at night. I see. I, I like everything is set in Transylvania in my mind. It's, oh, Transylvania, yeah, yeah, or like yeah, like a Slovenia or Romania, like some forest or <clears> even the. You know, those. I have a funny story about that. I was there once because my, I, I think like me and my mom went to go see my stepdad and, and uh, he was like in, doing some army training or some shit like in Transylvania, somewhere around there. But we went to Dracula's like uh, grave, supposedly. It's like a historic thing, whatever. It's like a museum-y thing. And my only recollection of all of this, this happened like in high school. Um, and I remember like I was like heartbroken over some girl or some shit. But classic, classic me. <laughs> classic. Right? Sorry, continue. So it was, yeah. It's classic me. But uh, I... I remember listening. It was the first time I'd ever listened to um, uh, the Hotel California. And I was like, I heard it once and I was like obsessed with it. And then went to like Dracula. I have this vivid memory of like seeing Dracula's grave, getting back in the car and just playing that in my headphones. Mm. I had like my iPod or whatever. And I was like just playing Mm -hmm. the Hotel California and being like, this is such a terrifying song. Have you ever just listened to the words of that song? Yeah, I think you pointed it out. And then I listened to it again with another ear. It, It was darker than I realized when people say spooky season i'm like play hotel california <laughs> like that's like time to play that and what's it what's it saying it's like you can come but you can never leave yeah or something like that. yeah and uh uh <clears throat> they try to kill it with the uh, there's like a let me look i'll, I'll find the, Pull lyrics up the lyrics to the hotel it, California. it also has sort of just <clears throat> that vibe of like a time suck where it's sort of like yeah you come and you're like just that. you come for fun but then all of a sudden you it's 30 never. years later and you're that washed up person that's still doing the same old thing in california mm. for it's sure like a, it's like a i think that's the idea of the song right that like if california the state itself was a hotel like it can get you how it just Keeps Eats people you. up and chooses people out. Mm. Choo- <laughs> choose people Eats them up, up chews them out. Choose it. It's like, listen here, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because the Eagles at that time were like uh, part of the Laurel Canyon kind of like second wave of the oh, Laurel yeah, Canyon. Right. They're from Laurel Canyon? They yeah, lived like. there for a while. <clears throat> and what is that recorded? like? A, was that like a music time where. Yeah, Ooh, Laurel we, Canyon you should watch in the late 60s. There's a couple documentaries this, on it. We liked the one called Laurel Canyon, A Place in Time. Yeah, mm. but like at one point, like Neil Young, Crosby, Stills, Jimi Hendrix, Frank Zappa, Mamas and the Papas, the Monkees, like they were all just like in the Laurel Canyon, neighbors. in the same, like hanging yeah, out all neighbors the time. hanging out. And it was just like this kind of that's so interesting real boom of culture. And then sort of the second wave of that. Did you say Joni Mitchell? Eagles. I did not she say Joni Mitchell, but she was there too. too. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't listened to a lot of Joni Mitchell. I need to like listen. She's like a fairy person. It's insane. <laughs> uh, so what are the lyrics? You have it pulled up? Verse four, the last verse. Well, it's the second to last verse is the scariest to me. Mirrors on the ceiling, the pink champagne on ice. And she said, we are all just prisoners here of our own device. And in the master's chambers, they gathered for the feast. They stab it with their steely knives, but they just can't kill the beast. That's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's like trapped it's in like the mess the, uh, hall of a... Un, like you, you can't be like the unquenchable thirst mm. that comes from living in California almost. Mm. Oh, true. You know, yeah, like yeah. we're all here for something and we like, so we're you know, we're drinking the something. King's champagne, but we just can't seem to get our finger on like what it is we're looking for. Yeah. Well, and I feel like people, I mean, a lot of people flock to, I think LA in particular, cause they're like big time dreamers. And so there comes with a certain longing 
that comes from like pursuing dreams, chasing your dreams too. For sure. Right. You know, nobody I, nobody's here like, with like a subtle sort of ambition. Right. It's True. kind of like New York city in that way. Like people work themselves up to a move to the big city, like mm-hmm. to New York to like prove that they can make it right. It's a, there's so much riding on the lines all mm-hmm. the time. Maybe that's yeah. why the city's so heavy. I, I have this like uh, feeling every time I come to LA, um, I'm like used to it now, but <clears throat> coming back and forth from Mexico where it's just like, it's heavy. Like there's like this energetic heaviness and I've had conversations mm. with people about it before. And I've like my, the only pattern that I've recognized or at least that like my, my, my theoretical brain thinks of is that because we're in a place where a lot of people come to dream and like try to achieve things, it's also like stressful because sometimes it doesn't happen. And there's mm-hmm. just so many dreams that don't come to fruition here. And that's a lot of stress that's just existing. And we're all, we're all antennas. I can sit in a room with you in, in silence. I've never met you, but I can feel what you feel. Like right. I know if you're sad or happy. So I can when you come to LA, that. you can just feel the sea feel of broken it. dreams washing <laughs> over you. A, a little bit. It's just like, I'm just like a little. Every happy. waiter, every Uber <laughs> driver, every like Postmates <laughs> delivery person. Like is a dream it's, it's, failed. It, yeah, and it's an interesting. I mean, thing well, every video editor. I mean, you know, everyone. I'm not, yeah, yeah. That's not my dream job either. You no, know, for like, sure. Yeah, everybody yeah. came here with some. There's like there was a higher expectation. I have this sneaky suspicion though that's part of the design, right? That's like this is part of like. This is my only conspiracy theory that I do like to take a, like part of. Is that? Are like, you sure this is the only one? <laughs> that's the, What's the other ones? What last time you were here, you were saying like mountains or trees or something? Like you got all sorts of conspiracy <laughs> theories. That was the TikTok. <laughs> but okay, what's this one? But mountains could have been big trees anyway. <laughs> uh, oh, just that that like um, well, just the way that the, the the nation was founded and like the way the the world has been for the past hundred years, or whatever. That it's just like a couple families. And banks that like kind of like made everything happen, whatever, like figured things out. Juice, you can say it. I'm not gonna say that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. You see what Kanye West is oh, doing? We've he's, talked he's about this. Right. But but no 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 like uh but also like it's a long con. Like if you think about it, it's like a fucking like I don't know. It's smart. It's like it's so to me. It's like it'd be so incredibly smart back in the day to have the foresight to just like. Well, there's your first fucking red flag. What you think people are that smart and calculated? I don't trust people. That I mean, much. there is an elite ruling class. Would you say yeah. so? Yeah. I don't feel like that's even conspiracy. That's just kind of like it's like, just life. Yeah, yeah. It's just life. You know? And, and okay, well, the okay. scary thing to me, I, I was having this conversation earlier or this week. That, that the scary thing to me though is not the fact that there's like a uh, people who are so rich they don't even know what to do with their money, but there's a, the, there's a human beings that exist in this life that are so rich that they can afford anonymity. Like you will never know who they are or what they do. Like you. You would yeah. never know. And I would assume, um, just as human beings are, with that kind of uh, exaggerated freedom, like imagine the things you would do because you're b- bored, because hmm. you can have everything. I mean, you're well, there's that guy who was flying around LA for a while. That's like, like Iron Man some guy? buku money. The jetpack guy? Yeah, the jetpack guy. Yeah, that could, that could be like a Perfect Saudi example. prince for like, We, we know, still yeah. don't know who yeah. that guy is. Exactly. Yeah, how do we not know who that guy is? I don't know. But I yeah, th- some people have so much money. Like Elon Musk is just the richest person alive who has publicly said how much money he uh, has. Exactly. You know, like, yeah, exactly. There are people who look it. at him like he's poor. Mm-hmm. That's just like the oh. highest... The, the richest poor person we know is who Elon. Who was the guy that just died who I should, I was I literally told myself, like, remember his name. It was, it was like Patagonia owner maybe or something. John but Patagonia. He, he just, <laughs> I don't think it was Patagonia, Patty but it Patagonia. was like an outdoor. Patty. Patrick Patagonia. North Face. I don't know. But he just donated like all of his, his all entire his fortune? fortune when he died that's to like that's, fighting yeah. climate change. And it was super that's rad. Big. And it's like, you'll never know his name, but we will always be talking about Elon because he's. The loudest guy in the room. Well, at least that guy did something good. I think most of these people, like a Saudi prince or something, and I'm like, that's kind of an uneducated, just like example. For sure. But like, yeah, yeah. I think they Sorry, have like trillions of dollars. You know, like the Saudi government has been selling oil to America for like 40 years. Like for they sure. have untold money. The reality they live in is just completely different. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. Than the world we live in. It, it makes me think of uh, recently, uh, I think Kylie Jenner, one of the, one of the Kardashians, uh, she like got, went on TikTok and started like trying to be on TikTok because every, everyone's on TikTok, whatever, um, in a like social media sense. And like, she was trying to be like relatable and people are just like, this is not relatable girl. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, and, and yeah, like you're so far removed from like societal norms that like, I don't think you, 
have the right to say anything about what's like going on in the real world. I don't know. The real world is like, I, like, I don't know. The right to say anything. I don't know. I mean, everyone has, is coming from a different perspective. This you is know? true. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. do I have the right to talk about, I don't know, poverty? Like, I'm not in poverty. I'm well, not homeless. I'll take, I'll take my words back. Not the right to say, but it's definitely going to be scrutinized way more. Right. Mm, or like the perspective sure. to give like an actual accurate sort of. Yeah. A thousand percent. Like yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, like a, a, a soldier and a general having discussion about what the fuck to do. You know, it's like, right. bro, you're not there. And he's mm. like, well, I'm playing, but you know, right. of course I'm not there. Yeah. You know, it's like, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Different perspectives. It reminds me too of that, like sentiment I would always hear about, you know, when po- um, actors get into politics and they're like, they should just stick to acting. Like they're not politicians. They don't know that world. So they shouldn't. That I don't agree with. I I don't agree with the like, just shoot the basketball and like, don't talk about, But you hear that you hear all the time. It's still still around. It's like, shut up and play. Like just plunge the toilet. Don't have an opinion (laughs) on politics. Like why can't an athlete, their job is to shoot a basketball, but they're still going to have opinions on politics just like you do. And I feel like LeBron, LeBron James is like such a classic case of that. Like he just is, refusing to not use his platform to speak his opinions and i i used to like hate on lebron but over the years i'm like he's i don't know i feel like he's well, being he, true to cool himself opinions? he was in space jam too yeah i mean he was in space jam too he's got so, great opinions so i don't know not making the best like. calls though. i don't know <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I, I don't yeah, always I mean, I, agree with everything spot on he says or pay close, that close attention to everything he says all the time. But I've had quite a few moments where he was like, was commenting on political things, mm-hmm. whether, I mean, that no, was like George Floyd or like from the right. beginning, Whoa. he's he's just been kind of making sure that he, he doesn't, doesn't, say nothing. doesn't get like trapped in the box that mm-hmm. the NBA wants to put on people. But at the same time, to JC's point, I don't think it's fair to say, like, shut up, LeBron. You're not allowed to have an opinion. Just shoot the no. basketball. But he has a lack of perspective. He's LeBron James. Like, so to say, like, look, money. dude, that's easy for you to say. You have so much money and your job is like playing with children's game. You know, like you're, you know, you're allowed to say it. But people why? are allowed to say, like, dude, I'm not listening to you. You're a fucking basketball player. Yeah, but I could understand why he would feel obligated to to use his voice because it is easy for him to say because yeah, he's not going to have be- and also because know, he became, crazy consequences. He became a big basketball player. Like he didn't, he, he wasn't, wasn't born. A, yeah. He wasn't yeah. born into no, I yeah. think like he silver, absolutely he silver spooned, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think absolutely. I mean, it's a uh, Colin Kaepernick is another great example. It's like the knee guy, the knee, the guy. knee guy, the guy who just was going down, you know? Yeah. No, honestly, shout out to him though. Cause like that, he lost a lot for such a simple act. Yeah, like, his whole career was yeah. just kind of... You had to think about it. Homeboy was in his bag. Like, he was like banking. And then yeah. all he did was like... Do you like, remember how dramatic everybody was? People were like throwing away their Nike gear and burning it. <laughs> Joey was Joey like burning shit. I'm pretty well, sure... We did my, that for a boyfriend's know, video, know, but yeah. It's funny because all he was saying was, I'm against police brutality. My way of expressing that, I'm going to kneel while you guys all sing. It's a simple thing. Yeah, yeah. What's the big fucking deal? No. no I it's mean, not even like he said, like, middle of the game, like, stop, everybody stop. I want to say something. It's yeah. like, the game's not even happening. Everyone's just singing. You're getting a fucking hot dog. Like, you're drinking a beer. Like, one guy's, like, texting. For sure. And Colin Kaepernick is kneeling. To, just because I mean, this it's is an his act way. of resistance, and that makes people inherently uncomfortable. To me, it felt like a bunch of people were just like... Why is he telling on us? Like, <laughs> stop snitching. Oh <laughs> That's what it felt like. We want to do police brutality and yeah. you're ruining it. Chill the fuck out, okay? It's like, not even fun to beat people up anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like. It's like, dude. Yeah, maybe. Well, but it's funny too, like, and I mean, I'm not, this is not like my original thought, but nobody got mad when Tim Tebow would kneel for abortion. He would kneel after every game. Tebow would, kneeled for abortion? It's like the Tebow. It's called like the Tebow, like to like take a knee. Yeah, I think that's around the time I was but like, oh, this guy's lame. Like pro-abortion? No, against abortion, oh. pro-life. Oh, he's okay. Yeah, yeah, He would take a knee for like, I don't know, Jesus or something, but he would so take he, a knee. It was like his thing at after or before every game, he would kneel to symbolize his expression of like what he thought was right or wrong in the world. Didn't yeah. even know that. Nobody gave a shit. Didn't make People a fuss. celebrated no him. Fun. It was like called like to Tebow. It was like chug a beer and then like do a Tebow, like take a knee. It was like a thing. Keep the baby. Not Keep in the baby. my house. It wasn't. Not in my house. No, not in my house either. But it was a, 
Am I making it up? Right? Have you ever heard of I've it? I've never I heard of it. I do remember. Okay. I don't. I didn't remember all the specifics, but I definitely remember. I remember T-Bowling. Kind of I didn't know personal that. crusade. Yeah, I didn't know about the crusade. It wasn't. Yeah, wasn't aware. He was of a crusader. Yeah, real crusader. crusader. Real crusader. Him and Colin Kaepernick should do. But like out of the two show. crusaders, only one of them got crucified. That's true. Exactly. They did the same thing. Yeah. In this, for honestly, like the the subject matter being just as big as each other, right? I would say, like abortion and like race, yeah, like, and like police brutality. Like I'm just, I'm just saying, like core, strong points to like strong make. points. Yeah. yeah. Core American issues, right there. Yeah. I guess, Throwing um, gun gun violence, and we've got a good trifecta. Thank you. I guess people getting mad at Kaepernick was like it was during the national anthem, which like, who gives a fuck? Also, <laughs> like we got to sing a song. Why do we have to sing a little song? Yeah, I resent Before it. we watch a bunch of adults play a children's game. <laughs> Why do we have to do this big show of patriotism? America. Okay, now, like, go throw the ball to each other. Like, also, what, what is so sacred about this also, fucking stupid game? Uh, update the song. Can we get Rihanna to make a song? I'm we over like, it. Don't pay no I will it's like sing a 1920s hard if it does Pro, a, a recession era song that I gotta fucking sing. I don't want to hear it. Under That's God. like a military thing. Under God too. I don't know. It's we a, are. I I want that out. Take I it out. I don't think there's under God in the anthem. Oh well, the is that just the pledge? The I'm pledge has the, the under pledge. God. Thing. I think no. The national anthem the bombs has in there. yeah. It has references Gave to through. God too. I'm pretty are you sure. sure. It's also a violent song. I need to look those lyrics up <laughs> now. In a, I'm pretty through, sure there's like God. It's triumphant. But well, the guy was the guy who wrote it was like on a boat. Listening to war outside the boat, so he just decided to pen a bop. In he the penned a war. bop, dude. Yeah, middle, yeah. It was like, I'm gonna make a song. <laughs> it's like, freshy time yeah. for a freshy, huh, guys? Like, hey, Francis, can you like pick up a fucking pitchfork or something? Toss me the quill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, oh. I'm creating. It's like, well, thanks, thanks a lot, buddy. Big help. You're really helping. Oh. Make sure you write down what what a big help you are. We should make a TV show that's like Seinfeld, but it's about his life and about him writing the song and then like pitching it. It's like three seasons of him trying to pitch <laughs> just it. Just trying to get it's it like, to happen. This is going to be America's song. He's like, yeah. I have no idea. And he, has to, like, an he has to take a boat <laughs> to all the different <laughs> cities to take the meetings, like eventually dies from scurry. Scurvy? Scurvy. Scurvy. Didn't Joey has scurvy. an R in there. <laughs> no, no. Joey. Did he have scurvy? No. What was it? Scabies. Scab <laughs> the way I remembered it was to think like Scabies couch. There was a couch because Joey had scabies. And then he's like, I probably got it from the couch. And we're like, there's scabies on the couch. Yeah. I remember because we had a couch out in the, like in our office, like in our yeah. porch. And yeah. And there's like a lady like sleeping on the, on the couch but that we found. Speaking of the, uh, but uh, sorry, just really quickly. I remember when yeah. we heard it because we were like in Peru at the time and we got like a text message or something. And I just remember you being like, Joey has scabies across. We were like eating lunch and you like <laughs> yelled it at me. And someone was like the pirate disease. <laughs> and I was just like, I'll never forget that. That's You're like, no, no. Oh, in Peru, like at base camp? Yeah, yeah. base camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that. Like, Joey no, not has that scabies. one. The other one. The other one. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Yeah, oh that's scary. Oh gosh. Scary. But speaking of like, you know, the Revolutionary War in that time, I've been listening to a podcast called Presidential. They go through each president. It's like an, a, an hour episode just about each president. Cool. Um, and the I'm not that far into it, but obviously it starts with Washington. So I did that one. But what was funny that I didn't really realize when they first won the Revolutionary War, they're free from Britain. Mm -hmm. But now they were like branding was like an important thing. Like George Washington was like a modest dude, you know, but like he's like, I can't just like. If the French diplomat comes here, I can't just be like in my house. Like we gotta look, we gotta look like a real fucking country. Is this the idea of the White House? Is this like? Well, the, the White House came much later because the British burned down the president's house in 1812, and then it was rebuilt gotcha. as the White House. Ah. But it was just funny, like that he was so he was really conscious of like the branding, like because they were almost like like frat dudes. It felt like who like whoa, like we took over, got a new and it's country. Like, now what? Yeah, yeah. You're a fucking country. So yeah, they were like, we gotta like, you know, have like nice plates or something. Like when they come here, we gotta like look like a real fucking country if anyone's gonna take us seriously. So like branding <clears throat> of America was like kind of a, a struggle at first. Interesting. Kind of interesting. I never, I don't know. Never thought about it. Yeah. Fuck. We should just go get a country. Well, you gotta make get a country, but it's fucking tough. You know. Plus, there's and a lot of land. kind of got snatched up already. A lot of land snatched up. But there are still islands there's available, islands. which is like, how? 
But you're part of a country, no? <clears throat> or are you your own country when you're part of that island? No, you must be part mm, of a country. Yeah, I wonder like how many of like, islands. How you many sure? islands exist that like uh, just are kind of like territory less? Like there has to be, right? But that just means pirates are going to come fucking fuck you. Historically, yes. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Historically, yes. You're pretty do, vulnerable to I, the raping and pillaging. I do oh, want to yeah. spend six months of my life on the ocean, though. I don't know when, but I've been thinking about it a lot. That's good for you. I love that for you. Yeah, You're not coming? You know, that I've never once had that dream. Uh, you know what? I know I would be so uncomfortable because uh, I have no sea legs. I would like probably throw up within the first hour and at all times, to be completely <laughs> honest. But there's something about it. You know what it reminds me of in a mental capacity? It reminds me of ice baths. Like getting in an ice bath for six minutes is like so beneficial, mm, but also so tough. Like it's like, at least for the first minute, it's tough. I did an ice bath recently with a, uh, like maybe a couple, like almost a month ago now with like at Fleur, because Fleur works at Remedy or whatever. It's a place on Sunset. And uh, I hadn't done one in, I mean, since we did like the dude since I remember we did a little ice, little plunge thing, or whatever, but like hadn't done one. And it was like 40 degrees and I just jumped in, you know, Ooh. and I remember being like, cause I've, I've been uh, seeing a lot of like Wim Hof and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, breathe. And like, I'm good. Just, you know, being my, like out of my head, just here. And the cool thing was that like a minute in, uh, cause I, I wanted to jump out so bad for the first minute, so bad. But then eventually it got to a point where like my core temperature of my, like my, the interior of my body became warm and only my, it was such, such an odd sensation. Only my skin was what felt the cold, mm. but like the interior, like I was just focusing on what I feel like inside and that like felt warm and yeah. Uh, I don't know how I got in that rant. I just really want to take a nice bath. Well, then you passed going. out from hypothermia and you don't remember the rest. Uh, that's what I'm You're talking about living on a boat for six months. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, the discomfort though of it, right? Like right. I, I, I think I want to, because it seems terrifying and scary and I kind of want to like, yeah, do that really, at least experience it once. Um, you, you haven't seen Perfect Storm, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a guess that you did actually, not see the film. I actually have. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Because um, <laughs> after seeing that movie, I think all my desire to be a fisherwoman or uh, a boat you know, a boat liver just went right out. You know, it's scarier. I saw, I read, I saw, her, I, I listened to a podcast once with this guy. There's this, I forgot what it's called. There's a word for it. Um, but there's like stagnant water that exists in the ocean that like, there's just no like a uh, current wind yeah. or and there's no wind it. and it's between, um, the States and like Hawaii somewhere. I believe I could be completely wrong about this, but I read, uh, or listened to a podcast of a guy who was, uh, going across, uh, the Pacific on his own and got caught in it and was stuck for like three months and like how he survived for like three months on his own. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. And then eventually he like just luckily floated far enough to like hit a current and then like Jesus was back in his way. But isn't that terrifying? That, yes. Like, you just yeah. be <laughs> <laughs> yes, JC. I completely agree with you. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I've always dreamed of having a, a pirate ship adventure. Mm -hmm. yeah, obviously. Yeah. Pirate boat. Pirate boat. And having some kind of a boat. Six months you is ever, a long time. You ever see Titanic? I did see Titanic. Never saw a perfect storm. <laughs> okay. Well, talk to me after you watch. But we are. So storm, we're talking Paco. about this show. We might as well clue people in. Might as well. That we're trying to pitch a show. Yeah. Where it's are. called That Kid Is You. And we travel to different countries. We get there. We sort of have like someone we're staying with. And we kind of hang out with them. Make a little studio in their house. And record music. And sort of it's like a travel culture show but surrounded around making music yeah and as we um so like, comment down below if you want to watch that show <laughs> um as we were talking about it it's like oh shit boat boat you boat. can do an episode <clears throat> where we live on a boat for it could just be a week but i got a week in me six months I got a week. I can but yeah, do it's a always week. been my dream, I can, and I, I think this this I show feels like. could even push it to two weeks if I had to. But okay. Fuck. You heard two, folks. You heard <laughs> two. <laughs> it's a two week stand about. But yeah, it's like, uh, man, if we can sell the show, it's it's the most right feeling when thing when we sell the show. Feels just so right. Like it's everything we're already doing and always wanted to do. Yeah. Just kind of puts money behind it that it's like a profitable venture. A thousand percent, and I like that. That's the way. I don't know. I like the kind of avant-garde nature of that's how we're going to get our music out there. Um, Cause it's, 
and not to say it's hard. Like I, we just gotta like you know put our best foot forward and just like put the fucking time into like just posting all the fucking time, really. But at the same time, there's something cool about like, yeah, heard of these guys because of the show. Mm-hmm. You know, right. like, there's something cool about that that I really like. And I, 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 I yeah, that's why I like it. So well, much. I think it's cool too because I can't. I mean, I can't think of maybe food, but food and you know music. They're these things that just kind of bridge gaps, like are cross cultural, right? Like they cut between all these things like you can't speak the same language but you can still hear a same song and feel the same response to it you know it's like such a beautiful thing and you guys in general I think do a really good job corralling people and inviting people into your process and like getting people to participate so I think it makes sense that Mm -hmm. you got these fresh faces in there and get to kind of help them yeah. Take their guards down, make, open up, make music, and I don't know. It seems really lovely. It'll be Queer Eye Chef's Table. It'll be great. A little bit. I Queer like Eye that. Chef's Table. So you guys Chef's mentioned Chef's Fleur. Table. Fleur is helping Fleur. you kind of pitch the show a little bit. How, how did you guys meet? I forget. She's I'm one of Fleur. your friends, isn't she? <clears throat> yeah, I met Fleur. Um, this is, uh, we were talking about this last night, actually. There's like a random assortment of things happened. Um, five or six years ago, John Mason was in New Zealand and was on a hiking trail and met AJ randomly. So they met and then flash forward to now. I That's met, her boyfriend. Uh, no. no, no. Uh, <clears throat> AJ came here he, uh, once. Oh, you didn't meet him. He's very attractive. Oh, thank God I didn't he, uh, meet him. He I sang a like song snot. that you that I showed you his song and you're right, like, right, oh, right. wow, it's so Okay, bad. I do yeah, remember his AJ. voice. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, AJ came to Sailita, um, and uh, that's when I met John because AJ was shooting his music video. And anyway, met John. So flash forward to like a two, maybe like a month and a half ago, two months. And uh, AJ had gone down to Sayulita while I was gone to like visit. And, and uh, he was dating this girl who happens to be Fleur's best friend. And the girl was just like, hey, yeah, or well, one of Fleur's good friends. Anyway, she was like, yeah, Fleur, you should come down to Sayulita. So like Fleur went down to Sayulita to like visit. And they're like, also, you should meet John and Janelin because John and Janelin were dating at the time. Uh-huh. And... They tried to like meet up. And anyway, I just remember like one day I came home and uh, Jane was like, hey, do you want to go to like dinner in San Pancho tonight? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not go to San Pancho? And yeah, Fleur, Fleur's there. And it was funny because uh, <clears throat> we were at like dinner at this vegan place or uh, yeah, vegetarian place, whatever. And I, was, I remember both of us were like, do you guys serve alcohols or like beer or anything here? And they're like, oh no, we don't have that, whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. Noted. And then, <laughs> and then there's. Noted, I will never be back here again. <laughs> and then, but then like uh, just an awkward moment happened. Like they're like, we're all having conversation, like an awkward moment happened with certain like parties. And, and we looked at each other and we're like, do you want to go to the liquor store right now and just grab a beer? <laughs> and we was like, yeah. And then me and Fleur walked off and like grabbed a beer. Uh, and some mezcal, and then I like took a shot at the bar or whatever. And that was back. like a bonding. That was the bonding. That was, yeah, that's when I was like, oh, you're rad. Like, you're super cool. But that's how we like bonded first. Yeah, and yeah. is she like in the industry? Yeah, Fleur used to uh, right, still act. She's an, she's an amazing actress. She used to act a lot in uh, New Zealand. She produces a lot. Uh, she's just rad and like it does a lot of cool things. Um, yeah, and I remember, <laughs> I remember like uh, she's the first person that ever like told me something that like really made me think about it because she was like I was like oh yeah she's like what do you want to do and I was like well I make music but I want to like also direct you know that's like I'm edited for a long time but I really want to direct and she's like if I gave you a million dollars right now what story would you tell and I was like fuck what story would I tell and I like pitched some thing that I like liked in my head but it really got me thinking like what what is the story that I want to like tell yeah like your story or like what film would you make sort of yeah what film would I make and also like what's yeah like what story do am I it made me like, think what's of, like the takeaway from that story exactly that yeah you would tell. yeah yeah the story that I know I know, the, I know the story that I would tell too would be the 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 not them era of my life it mm. would be that story and and I think so <clears throat> I think so because um it's a story of of failure and I feel like that story's not told enough because it's a very necessary thing. Like usually, I don't know, that failure or like especially grand failure, I think leads to greater successes. And I, and I just, I don't know. I, I used to think about that point in my life, like, ah, didn't, didn't do the thing that I want to do. I, I feel so bad about it. But later on in life now, I'm like so grateful for it because it prepared me for, um, situ- and isn't that what luck is, right? Like luck is the idea that like, a, like you're prepared for a situation that arises, whatever, like mm-hmm. there's a term for it. Where when preparation meets opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, the, but uh, I, I would not, never have been prepared for any of the things that I've been experiencing in my life in the past like five years if it wasn't for all of the failure that I um, <laughs> so drunkenly muddled myself through whenever I was younger. Well, and like, had imagine 
if you guys would have succeeded, you'd have blown up. You'd have been the biggest thing ever. But maybe like you weren't ready for we'd that. Maybe yeah. Maybe we'd all be dead. Yeah. Maybe you'd be like some I drunk about this. asshole. Maybe like yeah. I've thought about this too because like yeah. when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be famous when I'm like 13, you know, or whatever. Yeah, and it's like. Sure imagine if that would have fucking happened if i was like justin bieber or something which i wanted to be I, justin bieber wasn't a person but i wanted to be like the most famous yeah like for sure. star imagine if i would have had that when i was like 15 oh, you'd be a dick. by now i'd be a dick <laughs> all my friends would hate me i'd maybe be broke nope. i'd be like nope, maybe dead same. i mean it's like same i'm so yeah. glad i didn't so okay let's fill people in who don't know the not them era i mean what's the synopsis you guys were kind of like oh yeah you, you, you tell it um Right out of well, during college, one of my uh, best friends uh, I met in college, his name is Nelson, and he's, he's been on this show. Yeah, Nelson's been on the show. A, 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 a strong performing episode as well. Nice, yeah. hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, me and Nelson, um, I've, I found out that he like rapped in like college, or whatever, and then like we like we would freestyle together and hang out, and then eventually started like a rap group. Yeah, and then and it was funny too, yeah, because I I still remember like the day uh, we were hanging out with our friend AJ. And we were telling him how we want to start a rap group. And he's like, everybody's going to look at you and be like, not them. And we're like, yeah, <laughs> that's the name. Like, that's that's what we're going to call ourselves. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, after college, we were very stubborn and like refused to get jobs. Like just lived on girlfriends' couches and friends' couches for like almost a year straight. Um, and one of our uh, friends that we were in college with um, happened to like kind of, he's like an angel investor, basically. And just like made his own label and signed us. He like really believed in us. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of how I met you, Paul, like through all that stuff too. Cause we we're like rapping a lot in Orlando and yeah, well, I mean, so you're the angel investor. He, uh, put them in like a nice house. He started renting like a really nice house yeah. in a nice mm -hmm. neighborhood. It was called the mansion. It was like, let's go to the mansion. That was like the name of this house. Literally a mansion. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was like a beautiful mansion, but there was kind of all this hype and momentum yeah. around you guys. It was like, oh shit. Like, uh, I mean, partially the, the brilliance of read getting that house mm -hmm. like because it was such an image it was like such Washington a brand in the branding of america yeah, exactly exactly shit, like dude. we got to look like we're yeah, killing it an, uh, an era officially started when exactly. that, yeah. that key turned yeah for sure and it also was it's funny too because like it, it changes you mentally like whenever you like have something like that you're like in it and you're like man what i got to do more to deserve this i have to like mm. you know which is ironic because we didn't <laughs> right, right, <laughs> we're, right. Like, we're supposed you to would work think, you what you would think you might but you don't but, you just kind of you know, party through you're it. aware of it because i was very aware of it the whole time i remember yeah i and, and but i think that's like uh I, I think that's why like i want to tell that story too because like there's times in life I feel like where you're almost like a, a passenger to your story a, instead of the driver mm. where you're like, I'm here and I know there's a thing that I should be doing and everything's working my way, but like, I, I'm not. And why is that? You know, uh, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing that I feel like all human beings go through. Um, at least the, the more I talk to humans, I feel like that's a constant story that we all have. Um, but yeah, anyway, we were like in the mansion for a while and, uh, yeah, uh, it was a crazy time. We saw we we filmed a reality sh TV show pilot, which was also interesting. Um, and then you're like a part of that. Then we moved. I to wasn't a, a part house. of the reality show. Well, I mean, you were there. But I was there you're for there. that era yeah. because they had a friend Jess who was a, another singer. So that was like, oh, we're gonna kind of broaden out the label. Like we have this singer now too. And then my band was hired to kind of back Jess, yes. which was awesome. And we like. Demoed out a pretty good album for Jess that I've never heard. Yeah. At but a, it's me and Tato and Eric Miller. At Charlie's house, uh, Schwill. At Charlie's Schwill's place, Tichner's yeah. House, yeah. I just remember it being really cool. I don't even remember the songs, but... But yeah, yeah she's it's, so good. I feel like I I kind of believe in my, le in my core that we have a way of making the lives that we need to. And sometimes we put ourselves through like unnecessary hardship and like kind of do this self-sabotage as a way to be like, you know, yes, you might, part of you really, really wants this. And like you, if you feel like that's all you can see right now, but it's actually not what's good for you. It's not like yours to claim right now. Yeah. You know, like timing is such a fickle thing. True. Like well, I get think, it I, all aligned. I think mm -hmm. that, I think that too, the timing though comes with like your brain. Like, what are you thinking at that point in time? I, and I think I, I say that right now too, because in order to like get to those places whenever I was in college, like, 
I write for college, like me and uh, Nelson, we like refuse to get jobs. You're such assholes about that. We're like, no, fuck it. We're rappers. We're like fucking stars. At that point in my life, if you came and told me that I'm like in the next five years, I can be the most famous person you've ever met. I would, I would fight you to the like tooth and nail that like, no, this is going to happen. And all of these things happen. I got to California by the time I was 25 without lifting a finger or paying or like using, you know, not working at all. <laughs> like I didn't do shit, <laughs> but with that being said, the one thing that I had then that I think I lost in California was the extreme blind belief in myself. Mm. I used to have like the blindest belief in myself. And whenever I got to California, cause like Nelson got like into some things and like, he's better now, but like got into some things and then everything kind of fell apart. And in that time, I was also a very codependent human being. So I thought that I needed other people in order to have inherent value mm -hmm. in, as a human being. Uh, even though I knew I was like talented uh, I just thought that I needed other people, you know, and um, yeah, it made me made me stop believing in myself. And I kind of did for like a little bit there, even like in the dudes and stuff. I remember I was like very deep in like not believing myself during that time. I don't think it was until uh, we started making music together again uh, that I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot that I'm like I'm good at things or or, or at least not not to say that I I forgot who I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, this is a funny like sidebar, but I had this like spirit girl who like, uh, I like talked to and she like would tell me things of like the, you know, the spiritual side, if you want to believe in that or not. Um, but I do of like what they would want to tell me. And one of the things that she told me that I will never, ever forget. And this is also a human being that I've only met once in my life for like, we knew each other for like six months, like years ago, like almost 10 years ago. But she said, you need to remember that you're a leader. That's like all they want you to know. Like you need to remember that you're a leader. Mm. That's what the spirits were telling spirits. her. That's what your you. ancestors want you yeah, to yeah. know. Or my or my grandfather, because mm. like the way she said, like made it seem like my grandfather, who I love dearly, and he's the reason I am who I am. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So timing, yes, but also I think the timing comes with this, right? Mm -hmm. Like the time well, yeah. that it takes to. I mean, that's like get this regulated what you were saying too about the autopilot, like not in control. I always I relate to that too. Of like. There's sometimes where you feel like you're going through life in this autopilot mode where you're like not fully present to it either. And so that's mm. when like, I feel like shit can hit the fan and that's when you got to step back and be like, okay, what's happening here? And like get back in the driver's seat, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. It's like hard take to take inventory of what's going on and why you feel like you're outside looking in. For sure. Yeah. It's hard to know like when to when am I supposed to just like ride this wave? When am I supposed to like paddle and like get myself to somewhere else I'd rather be? When am I supposed to like make shit happen? When am I supposed to just let shit happen? It's like it, it, I finding the, that is tough. I love the metaphor of the duck too. Cause they're like, yeah, above the water, these ducks look so calm and whatever. They're so smooth, but then underneath they're like kicking rapidly and they can't stop kicking. Cause they're just like, they have so many little movements to get them to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. just that idea of like, I don't know so many of us takes a lot to like make sure we look good like things are going good on the surface right like you're mm. you're showing up for jobs you're doing all the responsibility things it's kind of i don't know it's easy to just get lost in it mm -hmm. for sure i find too that like it's an interesting thing too because like for me what's been working the most of my life too is like the uh, idea of like letting go of things you know like you have you kind of like you build this idea of what things should be like or whatever the fuck but like I feel like if you have the intention and you let go of um, the attachment to the thing that you're intending to do with your life, the more it comes to you. Mm. It's so it's it's kind of like it's kind of like being in the wave and like knowing the waves taking you somewhere um, and just being like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to get there. It's it's all good. But I feel like when you focus on fuck, I hope this wave is going the right way. That's when that's when it starts right when you're, like, you're distracted oh. you're not actually just surfing it mm -hmm. like you're thinking yeah. about like wait is this the right wave should i've been on a different wave it's like oh now you're gonna fall a thousand it's percent the same with dating too like the more somebody is interested in finding a partner and like a relationship i feel like they'll almost in a way they become less right. desirable because it's all they're just so fixated on fixated on it and it For becomes sure. like a desperation thing sure. versus like you know what there's nobody in my life right now. I'm going to focus on my career goals, my hobbies. I'm going to do me. I'm going to hang out. And like that energy is what is so attractive to like meet somebody at their best and just mm -hmm. see them and like shining. And the, I don't know. It's just, it's inherently funny how much we just kind of 
push away and repel some of the things we want most before we're ready, I think. Well, and what you yeah. described, JC, it's like, that's the approach to making a song too. Like, go into it with a goal, but... Sorry, great <laughs> cinnamon rolls. Go into it with a goal. Let's make a hard song. Yeah. But then just start making a song. Yeah. That was and in the end, it's not going to be the hard song you were picturing in your head. It's going to be something totally different. For sure. But then you just have to remember, actually, all I really want to do is make a cool song. We just started with, you know, so it's like, oh, like I need to end up here. Yeah. And you don't end up there. But all I actually really wanted was to like have a cool life and be happy. So even though I didn't end up there, like the actual goal was just to like do something cool. For sure. Which you ended up doing or something like that, you know? Yeah. With the um, not them thing, do you look at it as like, I blew it and how can I not blow it next time I have an opportunity? Or is it like, I wasn't like ready to succeed. So I need to be ready to like receive the success next time. Or, you know, like what is the lesson for you? I think the lesson for me, it's a little bit of... It's a little bit of the like knowing I wasn't ready for success. And I think it's also too, I wasn't good enough. Like I listened to like stuff back then. Like I, I just, I didn't, um, I didn't put the time into the art. I wasn't working. Like, I mean, I was writing all the time, but I wasn't like, and you had taught me that a couple of times actually. Like there's a, there's a moment that I'll never forget whenever we are like recording at the island and, um, and the island is like a house in the valley that we all lived in when we first moved to California. But I remember you're like, Oh, try your like lower register. Like maybe like that might sound better than like your higher pitch register. Like just try it, you know? And that like for some, that dumb little thing that was such a small thing, like changed my perspective on just recording. I was like, oh wow, I'm not putting the work into like learning how to use that, like do this so much. So now that I'm hyper aware of it, I'll like have friends in, um, that, uh, make music and then I'll watch them perform. And I'm like, you don't even know how to hold the fucking mic, right? You're not, you're not putting the work in. You know what I mean? Like mm. I like think about it now, but yeah, I just, it made me realize that I have to like, uh, if, if I want to be the kind of artist that I think I am in my head, I have to like do shit all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the only thing that like makes me, it's funny, it's the thing that like kind of sabotages me in like real life things. There are times where I have like a deadline for like work that I have to get done, um, you know, to get paid and exist as a human being. But I will all of a sudden get a stroke of inspiration and be like, fuck this, this isn't important. I don't give a fuck if I don't have money for next month. I'd rather write this song right now because that's what feels right. Mm -hmm. And like funny, it's a, it's a particular kind of procrastination. I do that really hard too. You called me out actually the last time you were here. Cause you're like, it was like so gentle, but you were just like, I was complaining about how I really should be working instead of making music and hanging out with you guys. And you're like, Oh, are you that person that like needs to have a deadline or else you're not going to get it done? And I'm like, Oh shit. I think I am like, I'm I, I wait to do everything last minute. Like it's almost like, and we were talking about it, the mm -hmm. deadline, if it's not there, I just come up with a million different things to do and just wait and wait and wait. And there's something about that, like crunch time that I just. Yeah. Need. And, and do you think that it's a thing that, okay, so were you like that in school? Yes. Yeah. Same. I, I feel would like it's always a thing that like, and I mean, in college, it was the same, but I did it even in high school. I'd have to get called out of things to like called out of school to finish an assignment that was due that day because I like <laughs> would start it like that morning. And I did that with my dad like all the time. And yeah, he was awesome. He nice. totally let me do that a lot. But yeah, yeah. yeah I did it so with funny. studying too. I was like, I'm not prepared for this test. I cannot do it. Like <laughs> get called out, make it up. Like I just would always run, run it down to the wire. Yeah. Past the wire. It sounds like. Past the wire. Past the wire. There's yep. a term for that. It's called you stress, I believe. It's like, why do I do that? I don't know. Because you stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It really does make so much unnecessary stress. We but. were also talking about this the other day. Is like, sometimes it helps me to have something I should be doing so that I'll get other things done. You know, like, mm. I got to write, like, let's say, I don't know. Let's say I got to edit this one video that I don't really feel like editing. Yeah. And that's on my to-do list. Edit that video. And so I'm actually going to do other productive shit just to put off having to do that video. It's like, well, I got to do that video, but like, I also got to water the plants. I also got to go grocery shopping. I also got to sweep. Mm -hmm. And so like, I get so much done because I'm putting, I'm just trying to avoid doing that one thing I'm supposed to be doing. So it's actually like that one thing I'm supposed to be doing is sort of fueling Everything. my productivity. Like it's actually helping me. Oh, that's interesting. You know, so like giving me something to do that I don't really want to do that I have to do. And then avoid it by doing other things. 
get shit done. So many strategies. <laughs> it's like the only way I get shit done. <laughs> We've That's got funny. so many strategies. I've been doing for myself lately just because uh, I did this thing where like, like I, I'm even doing it right now. Like I have like two videos to like finish uh, by tomorrow. No, by like Tuesday. But like I, I know that I, I'll knock them out, whatever. But I actually had five videos to like finish and I've knocked out like a good amount of them. So I only have two left. I have three like that I knocked out, but it was like a reward system thing that I've been doing with myself now. So mm -hmm. like if I want to go to the beach today, I can only go to the beach if I like fucking knocked out this thing. And yeah, I'm just trying to get better at yeah. the, and I feel like, that, like and, I've, and it's also funny too, because like I know my brain is set in instant gratification mode. Like the algorithm here has changed a little bit just because of like social media and stuff like that. So I'm just like, I'm aware of it now mm -hmm. and I'm trying to, yeah, like, uh, yeah, untie that lace that's in my brain of like, uh, I can put everything off. You know, what all sucks is the fact that we're adults and like, I don't need to do anything. Like nobody, nobody, like that's the shitty thing about accountability is that like only you can hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. and it's like a hard thing to like get good at. And I feel like, I feel like they should teach you teach us that like when we're younger because <laughs> they do no no, no discipline discipline do they not is like, teach children discipline well no not discipline really. like, well, but not like by yourself self motivation self intrinsic motivation right the whole system is sort of someone tells you what to do and you do it yeah mm -hmm. they don't really harness that in us yeah I feel like the best uh, the the or like acknowledging what kind of learner you are so you know what to do like that's cool, some yeah. people if they waited to the last minute to do their homework they would be so stressed out that they couldn't even think creatively or clever in a clever way or like it would just be too anxious you know but right. like for some people that's what I need you know what I mean like everybody's so different and there is no sort of centering around that yeah for sure yeah, school's fucking weird. But I was thinking too, it's like dangerous when you make those promises with yourself because if you don't follow them, like I'll set those rules for myself sometimes mm -hmm. and then I just ignore them and then I feel worse. And then it's like, it's taken more from the energy field because I'm like, oh shit, I told myself to work out today. I fucking ate Taco Bell, I didn't work out. And then it's like, it's like compounding at that point. But I think that's why you got to start small. Yeah. Yeah. Like, little, little steps. I'm going to tell myself, yeah, yeah. like, I'm going to, I'm going to walk to the end of the block, walk back home. And like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And smaller. it's barely even going to benefit you, but you're going to do it. You'll come home and say, I did that thing that I told myself I was going to do. And then the next day. And then you put it on your list and you cross it off. I do it. it. List, I do that. You cross it off. I have yeah. to like build up the momentum in the other For way. Sure. I'll be like, oh yeah, I didn't do the whole major thing, but I did do that part mm. or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah. You ended up doing something. Yeah, yeah. We did, um, we were talking about this yesterday, I think, but like humanity has sort of figured out or we're figuring out how to sort of hack our own systems. Like we got so addicted to the phone, mm -hmm. but then because of like that addiction and studying, like what makes us so addicted to the phone, you can develop something like Duolingo where it's like you learn Spanish and it plays on the same addiction. Christine is addicted to Duolingo the way people are addicted to Instagram or something but like that. Know, like, what are you learning? Spanish? Yeah. Espanol, nice. cool. yes. si. Si, si. And she, so she'll sit there. She's like, oh, like I'm almost in the promotion zone. And if I, <laughs> if I just do four more lessons, like I'll beat this other bitch. In but like way Nebraska. cooler. <laughs> I'm way cool about it. It's cool. She is cool about it. But, um, but <laughs> no, it's like, I mean, it's Nebraska. <laughs> it like has hacked your system, you know, yeah. to, but you're using it to your benefit. And I wonder if that's I like have... kind of what the future is, is like, we know how addictive we can be to shit. So how do we use that as like a tool yeah. to like get addicted to like learning music or making shit or. It's so true. Like I have played that game now. I've pl practiced Spanish like 187 days in a row. Oh, right. I have not worked out 187 days in a row, even though mentally I want to be physically active as much as I want to learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. But. It just hasn't happened. I haven't got to get an app that gives you a streak. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Honestly, there probably is an app. No, I, I, do have, place I have that walked my run, thing. which kind of does some of that. You can get into challenges and stuff. But uh, yeah, you're right. It has definitely catapulted me. I like the competition. And working out is kind of like the same as like the going on a boat for two weeks or uh, ice bath. It's like the the there's comfort after the discomfort. Mm. Like you just got to put yourself with the discomfort for a it's little bit. True. And then it's like so fucking beneficial. You're like, Oh shit. It's just the starting. I forgot. Right. Like this yeah. is, once yeah, you start better, though, you know? it's like that positive loop that kicks in. Once you start, you have more energy and you like can keep it up. I just feel like for me, it's always the, 
stopping and going and then mm. it's so much energy to get back into it you you've know, been on a good physical kick yeah i've been doing i've been doing good i nice. sort of hacked my system nice and i just have a to-do list and i just a good thing to think about just as creatives at a table i one thing that i've noticed pattern wise like from, from working out i can create way easier mm. like better things happen i write like the better verses that i think i've written after just like a workout it's so interesting. Like, yeah, like the a, blood's pumping. Like too much shit. Mm -hmm. I was in the middle of a workout and I was like listening to that, just freestyling some shit. And then that, that's how that verse wow. came out. I, yeah. And usually I'm like, my brain is like, oh, have a couple of drinks at night time. Then you'll fucking write some cool shit. Right. Nah. Mm -mm. It's like go for a fucking run and then just. I love that. Bob Marley used to do like a, a football match. Like let's kick around the soccer ball. Nice. And then we'll go record. Cool. And it was like, you know, it's like now that like, let's we do have that the, the next life time. Yeah, we did that at Chibi's. Yeah, that's true. Fuck. And really, it was inspiring. Just kick a ball, but like, no woman, no cry. <laughs> <laughs> one um, one way. Beautiful. <laughs> one way I've learned to hack my system, and that's helped me kind of keep up with um, my to-do lists and things, is like, I have to boil it down to just the simple start of it. Mm. So like, I don't have to think about like, oh, I got to do like yoga. I got to do 20 minutes of yoga right now. I don't think of it like that. All I have to do is push play on a yoga with Adrian video. That's all I got to do. Push play. Once I push play, I know I'm going to set it down. I know I'm going to follow it. I'll do the yoga. <laughs> all I have to motivate myself to do is push play. Or like when I used to go to the gym, Yeah, yeah. I don't have to think about, oh, I got to go to the gym now. I got to work out. All I got to do is put my shoes on and walk outside. Once I'm outside, I'm going to walk to the gym. Once I'm at the gym, I'm going to do something. Yeah. You know, it's like, I just tried to boil it down to like, what's the simplest Thing I actually need to motivate myself that to is do useful. that starts the process. It's always starting. That's the hardest. Yeah, yeah. It's just Fucking starting. Start. Starting like just worst. just push play on the YouTube video. That's all I have to do. Yeah. If I can motivate myself to do that, just so easy. The it's rest the just kind of same with comes. cooking for me too. It's like mentally, it's such a hurdle. You know, if I'm tired after work or something, to want to like come home and start the process. But then, yeah, once I just start. It's so easy to like relax into, you know. And then you just, make these beauties. And I make, yeah, yeah. I make yummy shit. But yeah, just think about what is the thing you actually have to, What's is it just like, step? I just have to put headphones on and listen to a show or right. I just got to start pulling shit out of the fridge. If I pull shit out of the fridge from there, that will create it. the vacuum that will produce food, you know? I like it. Yeah. It's like, what is that just, what's that first thing you got to do? I feel like you are a big um, like affirmation guy, mantra guy too. Has that been a saw you thing? Um, like you're just so intentional too about how you frame things. Like you said, like when we like when we sell the show, and you chime in with like when. No, or, I said if. He said when. Right. Yes. Right. Right. You guys were yeah. there. You remember. <laughs> Roll back the tape. <laughs> um, yeah. The the only thing I've ever written down in my entire life, uh, like uh, I just remember like I wanted to like make a certain amount of money, and I wrote it down when we were at the Encino house. And then I moved to Sally and like a year later, like I literally get a call for like exactly that. Okay, like exactly Jim what Carrey. I wanted. No, I'm, 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 yeah, it's so real. I, I just, I, I can't stress it enough. So much so that I've even, I've seen friends in town. Like, um, one of my homegirls, uh, a year ago, um, she just put on her like screen on like the, her laptop, whatever, of like the Eiffel Tower in Paris, whatever. She just wanted to go to Paris, whatever. And then, um, it's funny. She was like in Paris recently and I saw, I saw her in shorts like, Oh shit, shit, she's in Paris. And then she like did this whole story about like, Holy fuck. You ever like dreamed about something and then you're in the dream and remember mm. you're like, you realize you're in the dream, the thing that you like wanted and like that you've been kind of putting out into the world for like the past year. And I, yeah, I wholeheartedly believe that there's, there's so much power and strength to, uh, to words and to what you like write down. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to like be like a like a hippy dippy about it. Be like, oh, it's like the secret, you know, whatever. Like, you know, attraction, laws of attraction. But man, I don't know. There's something powerful to it. That's why I think rappers are the best fucking manifestors. Like, motherfuckers are like in the trap rapping about having <laughs> millions of dollars, and like fucking a year later, motherfuckers got a million dollars. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know if it's. It. I mean, you know, I, I don't like all the like woo bullshit, but there's obviously something. Something's to it. Either it's like scientific or woo, or but like. I mean, there, there is a power in it. It does yield results. There's so much power. Results. Like the gratitude studies are really popular. Like they know very, like there's so much research out there that says if you focus on gratitude daily, that you are, you become a happier, more gracious like person. 
So it's kind of like that same attitude of just controlling what you think so that you're steering the ship that direction. Like the car is going to go the way you look. For sure. So if your mind is well, yeah. looking at like worst case scenarios, that's likely to mm-hmm. happen versus if your mind is like, eye on the prize, this is what I want. Yeah. Chipping away at the vision. You have a good explanation of that. The computer. Uh, I was just thinking it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like uh, the brain is like a supercomputer. Mm. And if you put in a problem, it's just trying to solve it all the time in the background. And it wants to be correct and prove itself to be correct. So if I say I am kind, like, you know, there's like the morning, like manifestations people do. You say like, I am kind. I am generous. I'm a good friend. I'm a, I'm a beautiful person or whatever you say this, then you go out into the world and you're going to prove to yourself that that's true. Like you will be kind, you know, or just being like, today's the best day of my life or like today's going to suck. Some people wake up and say, today's going to suck. Okay. So then you get in the car. Oh, there's traffic. See, I knew it. Then no, you get to work and there's a meeting. It started an hour early. You fucking missed the email. I fucking, I knew it. I knew it. I told you, but same day you wake up today's best day of my whole life. You get in the car, you're in traffic, you're like, fucking, my favorite song was on the radio. And you're like, see, I knew it. It's the best day of my whole life. And then you get to work and there's some meeting that started and you didn't know about it. And so then you get to like, you don't even have to show up for it or something. And then you're like, see, I knew it. I told you, it's the best day of my whole life. Like same exact day, but it's just like, for your sure. perspective changes everything. It's true. Also, th- the computer, which is the brain, isn't you we are the observer of the computer. So I think that's another thing that's important to think about that. Like this thing is always fucking firing. Your Mm -hmm. thoughts aren't necessarily you all the time. Um, I've been trying to do better about like, uh, talking to myself kindly. Cause sometimes I'll like get into like negative patterns of like thoughts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Oh no, no dude, you're doing good. You know, like you're, you're fine or whatever. But also I've like consciously thought about this that some, yeah, sometimes whenever I'm having thoughts, like I'm not the one like initiating the thoughts. They're just like certain, they're just happening. Like, and then I like stop myself and realize it's happening and be like, oh fuck, I just like told myself this stupid story. Why did I, why did I do that? But like, I, I think that's an important thing that's, cause I don't know, like, yeah, like we, we're like the observers in our brain. Like mm-hmm. we're like, you're, you're, when you, when we think a thing, like you're like, you're listening to your inner voice. Like that's, you're observing an inner voice. Mm-hmm. You're, so I would say that the one thing to think about, or maybe um, at least this is like one thing that I like to think about. Cause I've, I've heard other people talk about it and I started like being conscious about it. But yeah, that this is the, this is the computer that we're not really in, so to speak, but just know, you know, know that. Cause like, it's not always you having the thoughts. It's not, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like you is the conscious you in the present. Right. And mm-hmm. then sometimes this thing is just running. Like you are saying, it's a computer running in the background and it's going to fucking say a lot of shit. Right. And you just got to like, let kinda it kind of quality flow control. Through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quality control. Yeah, yeah. Choose what you're going to exactly. give space to. And, and just, and just be aware of it too. And I feel like it takes a little bit more. Um, it, I feel like it alleviates the pressure too of like, not um, always doing those things, right? It's not necessarily me all the time. And, and I don't know, it's, I, it's helped me be kinder to myself because I'm just like, oh yeah, like th- this is just a program that I have to fucking deal with sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's difficult, but I'm only making it more difficult by like going against it. You know what I mean? If that makes sense? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, I've been working on that too. It's the self voice. It's it's true. You know, we we save our cruelest sentiments for it. For sure. I think that's like a shared universal practice, you know, like the voice, the things you say to yourself, you would never say to me. And, mm-hmm. you know, you just don't treat people you love the way you treat yourself sometimes. Very true. It's like such a worthwhile pursuit to get that under. I feel like everyone would be extremely brains. embarrassed to have to have yep. the their thoughts of the day in a transcript read out loud oh my to God, everyone yeah. around them. Oof. Everyone would be fucking that would, would just be, be so brutal. racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want anyone to read those. No, no, no. Um, you, you, piggybacking off of your thing, Christine, you, you have been saying how it's like it was hard for you and still maybe is hard to call yourself an artist. Yeah. And like that's such an obstacle of like what we call ourselves, like how we identify. Even like worth, like I am good is hard for people to call themselves let alone like I am an artist yeah, or I'm a good artist. Yeah. But yeah, there's like so much in, and there's a lot of power in that too. We tell ourselves we're bad 
And then we are going to prove to ourselves over and over that we are bad. Well, Instagram gave me a creator count and they said, what do you want to be? And I picked artist. So I guess I'm over it. So you're it. an artist. She's I'm an through. artist. She's now. broken through. Instagram gave me permission to be an artist. <laughs> now, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, you got to. And with, with that, I'm piggybacking all of all that. With yeah. that being said, whenever like you did, like with the idea of intentions or like saying things out loud or like the thinking a certain way in your head, like we're all again, energetic antennas, right? Like, so whatever that energy that you are putting out, that, that kind of thing is like where you're steering your wave to, right? Maybe a year and a half ago in Sayu, I remember thinking, consciously telling people, like thinking like, okay, from now on when people ask me what I do, I'm going to be like, okay, rapper director. Like, I don't want to edit anymore. I'm, I'm a fucking director. Like, that's what I'm going to do. And then all of a sudden I started getting like gigs to direct and like, also we could use shit. some help. We have some music videos to make. It'd be great to get you. Would love to do that. We sure do. I would be really fun I would to have love you do to a, have you do it. A Modern Mystics music video? Yeah. yeah oh my sick. God, I'm so down. I'm so down. I have my I camera. Mean, and then there's, I mean, we have our oh song shit. together. It's Thunderstorm I know, in my I was mind. just thinking that. That yeah. could be a great place to I start. I have an idea for that one, remember? I don't remember it. Yeah. Fuck. It's somewhere in my head. In my... Man. Well, we what have, was we Oh, so many things to do. Oh, because uh, I wanted to do like a, you know, like the idea of like a, you know, like phone screens, whatever. And there's mm -hmm. like three screens, whatever. And it looks like it's like three different phones, whatever. And we're, you know, all singing in different places, like a, like art directed differently, like colors and stuff like that. But then um, the camera like pulls out and you realize it's just a set. It's not like three phone things. Whatever. Oh, it's like yeah. sets that we like. Right. Cool. Yeah. That we make. But it'd be fun to like, you could do it wherever. But yeah. yeah. It'd be I'll fun like if it idea. was built that it, you, have, you also see the phone. You see three phones. And you think you're looking at an image on each phone, but I then you zoom out and the, the big phones are actually just these giant frames you built. I love that. On the set. That's fucking cool. So, and we it looks like a table. It looks like a coffee table with phones on it, but then you zoom out and that's, and that, that was a wall designed to look like a coffee table. I got a guy. <laughs> I got a guy to make it. We were talking last night about a vi potential video idea and I was thinking it'd be cool to build like some very experiential art set where you're like really in it and it's kind of this Mad Hatter world and have like a... Mm. tea party in this weird yeah like weird oh, ass world that. we make i think that'd be fun and that'd like i fun. like the idea of like a tea party because it's like cute and sweet which is kind of how our music is most of the mm -hmm. time so but yeah the concept would be to like build this magical kind of world like playground almost kind of a thing and then shoot the music video just kind of just you know exploring the world you just kind of built you know? cool like the set that's super fucking cool be fun yeah, man, lots of shit going on. Yeah. Lots of shit coming out. Things are cooking. Yeah, this is exciting. Is this the closeout talk? What are yeah, we, what are we gonna, up. <laughs> wrap up talk. Wait a second, wrap Thunderstorm on my mind. Yeah. That one's gonna be on our album. Correct, that'll be a modern mystic song featuring That Kid Is You. Shit. This is exciting. It's we, an exciting we're gonna time need, to be alive. We're gonna need to get this Re happening. Really quick, I have uh, the, one, one of my homegirls come up with an idea for a music video that I think is really fucking cool, but it starts off like, let's say like whatever the beat is, it's just a close up of someone's like shoulder or something and it's just a, like, somebody like tapping on it. But it'd be fun to play with like the amount of hands that pop up on someone playing the mm -hmm. thing and like where it goes. And then like when it zooms out, it's just like a bunch of hands just like playing the beat. It's funny. Like you could do so much with that. I kind wow. of am picturing really that cool. Christ furniture commercial where it's like you see everybody's the close ups of everybody's hands and yeah. then you zoom out and you're like, oh, that's what they're doing. That's they're what's all happening. sitting in this mm -hmm. awesome lounge yeah. chair. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's like gotten it. so many likes by oh, humans cool. yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> oh yeah it did well that was human yeah, yeah. approved well not like a not like yeah just anyone that i've showed it they're just like oh i'll be like oh yeah i direct and then uh or like and i edit too whatever um, did you did you edit all that uh yeah i did it yeah i Have yeah seen it? no no i loved it yeah, i loved yeah. the cut i thought it was like she's one of the humans who liked it yeah yeah i thought yeah. i thought it was like way more emotionally gripping than a furniture ad could be i was very impressed right yeah, yeah. makes you feel something mm -hmm. yeah makes you feel something absolutely yeah. i mean uh, nick directed it technically yeah he was like directing but yeah. Uh, before we get off, we our last episode was Chelsea. Chels, nice. And we talk a lot about how you, like, sort of incur your your skills of encouragement are legendary. But then also just you encouraging her to like them. freestyle and rap and do music. It's like a big part of why she's doing what she's doing. Her so origin story. In case you don't listen to it, which. We know how much you like Marvel. You're part of the origin story, bud. <laughs> You're the spire that bitter. That makes me so happy. It makes me so happy, especially from Chelsea, because Chelsea is one of the more, like, mo actually most talented actresses I've seen. Like, I've I've just seen, like, her in, like, three different things before, and she's a whole different human being in each one of those things. Gotta see it. So gotta, I've like, never seen her homework. in something. She's so fucking good. 
Like whenever, but whenever like I have friends who are like, yeah, I have this idea for a project or whatever. I'm just like, my friend Chelsea Lopez is like really good. You should like talk to her. Yeah. So Fleur is really good too. Fleur and Chels are like good actors. Shit, we got ourselves a little Perks of group. living in LA. It may be heavy, but it's full of creative weirdos. A lot of good pretenders out here. A lot of good A lot good of good thinkers. pretenders. And like there is real beauty. I like being around dreamers, even if most of them failed. Like it's, I'd rather be around dreamers than practical people it's who just nice, were like it's a nice I energy. just went the safe route you know and I didn't fail I just work at a cubicle and I'm miserable <laughs> or whatever you know like uh, I, I'd rather be around the dreamers that failed than the people who, people who were afraid shot to their dream. shot yeah yeah no I agree with that and I feel like that's kind of like for like the show idea I feel like that's an important idea now that you said it out loud for the show because there's a lot of people that believe that they can't make art because they're like they kind of are stuck in societal the idea of what society tells you you should do like mm -hmm. like you know the whole get a job have a family and that's it then you, you die whatever that's mm -hmm. that's life it's like no like you can do whatever the fuck you want and i feel like i feel like unlocking that for certain people is like a good thing like i mean i told chels like, hey yeah, you should rap now she's like she's yeah. here i one of my uh, uh friends i've been hanging out with uh she, i made a song with her and then like the next day we were like having a conversation she's like oh that's a good idea for a song now she she's kind of like a skateboarder all of a sudden a skateboarder doesn't look at uh, a set of stairs and sees a set of stairs he sees like an art artistic obstacle that i can do things it on. seems like that too yeah she started recording sounds and sending them to me and it's just like everything became a, mm -hmm. a future song yeah and it makes life prettier like yeah. that's the yeah. cool thing about it well like, and how uh, many people walk around i can't dance I can't, mm -hmm. I'm not creative. Yeah. I can't sing. I can't make music. And obviously they can. Yeah. And if you break down that wall of, I can't sing. Now that's broken down. Like maybe that lets other things, maybe they were telling themselves, I can't get rich. I can't be successful. I can't work from home and just have everything I want. And, and, th and this is why words are important. One yeah. bad word can poison the well. I could, yeah. that ripple effect can become very big. But I feel like if you break down one brick of that well, the whole thing could fall out and, <laughs> yeah. and it's a flood. And then you're surfing it. Bring the it back waves. to the surfing metaphor, <laughs> surfing the waves. And, uh, you know, to try not to drown. And then we're all going to die <laughs> in the end. So it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful ride. Sure is. Hey, what a great impromptu yeah. podcast this Thanks morning. Yes. Christine, thank you for the cinnamon rolls. You're thank you so much. You're very welcome, guys. Thanks for the beer and coffee. Oh, yeah. Anytime. It's nice to have you on the undivided spotlight here. I was thinking that because it's like you're, you've been on the show so many times as like the third or fifth. I'm like ad-libbing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're like a... But it's, uh, I like having just, just a you. The spotlight Feature. looks good on you, JC. <sighs> on you guys too. Thanks. Thank you. You guys are good. You're so good at this, by the way. Oh, oh thank thanks. you. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Good day. Good night, everybody. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>